Hello, everybody. My name is Graham Elwood, and you are watching the political vigilante truth rising up. Somewhere beneath Wayne Manor in the outskirts of Gotham comes the political vigilante. That's why you come here to watch this show, because I talk about stuff the mainstream media is never going to talk about. I don't think MSNBC and Fox are going to do this segment. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm nuts. Um, oh, but come to a live show, folks. We're doing Government Secrets Live, Stockholm, Sweden, October 3rd, Berlin, October 5th, London, October 12th. And I'm doing stand-up, preparing for my comedy special, New York City, October 18th. I'm playing Broadway, October 20th. We are in Madison, Wisconsin, Detroit, Michigan, October 21st, Cincinnati, October 22nd. And then taping my first ever comedy special at the historic Zanies Comedy Club in Chicago, October 26th. Get your tickets at GrahamElwood.com. That's how you make Gotham great again. Come to a live show. You meet, we've had cool people come to our shows in the past. You never know. Tara Reed, Dr. Jill Stein has come to show. Like you never know who's going to show up. You never know. Um, and also a great way to support the show is do what Adam Kautz has done and uh, go to Patreon.com slash Graham Elwood, where you can submit topics and, and stories like this. One of the things we love talking about on this show is solutions for climate collapse. Uh, we're in dangerous times, but there's a lot of people out there doing good, smart work. And the thing I always say on the show, we don't even need some like miracle cure that it's already being done. We just need real money behind it. Unfortunately, it's going to take a top down solution, meaning big federal government spending a lot of money. And the American government, which I know is, is is money's really tight. I mean, sure, we've got trillions of dollars to bail out Wall Street, but I bet it's really tight. Oh, I'm sure uh, bipartisan support for increasing Joe Biden's military budget up to $839 billion, up from $778 billion. Anyway, anyway, anyway I'm not saying that. We just sent another $3 billion to Ukraine, which totals about $70 billion we sent to Ukraine. But, but that's not the point. We don't have clean water in Mississippi or Flint, Michigan, or a thousand other cities. But, 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 but my point... <laughs> America has the money to fix the world. We could save the world from climate. America should be leading the way. And rather than fighting with China and Russia, we would sit down with them and they would want it. They would want, they want, they want peace. They want the world to survive. They, they're, they're terrified of America just nose diving the whole planet because we're drunk on crazy power and we're a, we're an out of control military budget. We outspend the next 12 countries combined, but there's silver linings out there. There's stuff that's being done. So, so Adam sent us this, and I wanted to show you this video. The Sahara is one of the hottest places on Earth. It's an extremely harsh environment, receiving less than one inch of rainfall per year. Despite this, 2.5 million inhabitants live within the Sahara, with the desert spanning across 10 countries, and it's expanding southwards at a rate of 48 kilometers per year, which is further degrading the land and eradicating the already scarce livelihoods of populations. It is now encroaching on more populated areas in the Sahara region, where 44 million people live, and it is said to be 10% larger than it was a century ago. In this region, temperatures are rising. So let's just be real clear here. I didn't know that. So the polar ice caps are shrinking, sea levels are rising, and the Sahara Desert is growing. Gee, that sounds like problems that we need to address right now. Faster than anywhere else on Earth. And since the 1970s, it has been affected by severe droughts. This has come at a huge cost. Land degradation is currently estimated at 490 billion per year. The Sahara Desert is just one example of how deserts are expanding across the world. It's estimated that more than 1 billion people, which is roughly one-eighth of the world's population, actually live in desert regions. And a further 1 billion people across 100 countries are threatened by desertification. Desertification refers to land degradation in arid, semi-arid and sub-humid areas resulting from various factors, including climatic variations and human activities. When land degradation happens in the world's drylands, it often creates desert-like conditions. Drylands take up 41.3% of the land surface area, and up to 44% of the world's cultivated systems are in drylands. Water scarcity is the gap between the demand for water and its supply. In drylands, there is a high demand for water, despite there being a lack of supply. Water scarcity is said to affect between 1 to 2 billion people. It is estimated 
that nearly half of the world's population in 2030 will be living in areas of high water stress, and it could displace up to 700 million people. It is for this reason, innovators across the world are trying to turn this around. In this video, we will show you how the first ever off-grid water production system is creating water from thin air in the desert. This breakthrough technology is on the forefront of drought solutions, helping to provide free water for billions of people living in drylands across the world. So stick with us as we dive into today's video. Mali, a landlocked country in Western Africa, was chosen as the perfect testing location for a drought solution technology that can create water out of thin air. Since most of the country lies in the southern Sahara Desert, with up to 65% of Mali's total landmass being desert or semi-arid desert. Although Mali is one of the largest countries in Africa, it has a relatively small population, which is largely centered along the Niger River. The Niger River flows in its interior, functioning as the main trading and transport artery to the country. Sections of the river flows periodically, providing much-needed fertile agricultural soil along its banks, as well as creating pasture for livestock. In Mali, Three quarters of the population rely on agriculture for food and income, and most are subsistence farmers, growing rain fed crops on small plots of land, according to the Food and Agricultural Organization. However, droughts and the continuing advancement of the Sahara is causing forced migration and conflict amongst agricultural communities. As a result, there has been a decline in agricultural production, reducing household assets and leaving many of Mali's poor even more vulnerable. Mali is just one example of many agricultural communities across the world who face the challenges of desertification and water scarcity. This is why Project Sun Glacier is creating solutions for climate change by utilizing the power of the sun combined with new technology, which is cost-effective and efficient to bring water to drought-prone regions. The project is led by App Verhegen, a Dutch sculptural artist, writer, filmmaker and innovator with a fascination for nature. After traveling to the Arctic, he saw firsthand the effects of climate change. Inspired by looking for solutions instead of placing blame, his vision was to utilize the elements available in our changing climate. He realized that more sunshine is available in places where water is scarce, and that by utilizing the power of the sun, by using solar panels, he could power a machine which relies on a process of condensation to create and collect water. But extracting water from thin air seems impossible in dry desert conditions, since humidity is almost zero. However, the Sun Glacier team made of scientists and innovators knew that it wasn't impossible, since although hot deserts seem dry, they still contain an amount of water in the air. This is known as absolute humidity. App Verhagen says that the absolute humidity in deserts is up to five times more than in the Netherlands. It's mostly because of the high temperatures that it doesn't rain. For the Sun Glacier team, controlling the temperature within the water harvesting unit is the key to making water from thin air. The harvester comprises of two separate devices, an energy unit which draws and stores power from solar panels, and the water maker which uses the energy to cool down a metal plate. Once this temperature is low enough, humidity in the air condenses against the metal, creating water droplets which drip down into an area to capture the water. Sun Glacier says that the liquid that's harvested is similar to rainwater and can be used for agriculture or cleaned for drinking. After the initial testing of the machine in Mali, it was obvious that more work was needed to improve the technology. Over the last 12 years, Sun Glacier has been upgrading and optimizing the technology. Tests have demonstrated that this condensation method is at its maximum efficiency. Whilst pushing the climatical boundaries of conventional technology, they have created several more efficient versions, such as the DC-30 model, which is much more cost-effective since it has no battery, no inverter, and no moving parts that can break. It can be plugged into a cheap small solar panel, and the cooling device only costs $3. Another model is Droplet 20, which produces up to 30 litres of clean water per day. This is a lightweight compact device, which is built into a mobile flight case. It is easy to transport and tough for travel. Sun Glacier has developed the compact machine with multiple power options, with a 24 volt connection so it can be directly connected to solar energy installation, powered by battery or plugged into a power grid, with a cooling capacity of 80 to 620 watts. This highly intelligent system produces up to 3 litres of water per kilowatt hour. Very real opportunities now exist for water from the Sun Glacier technology to be used for drinking in off-grid locations and for agricultural scaled-up applications. 
including greenhouse production. According to Abba Hagen, we can introduce positive signals in the discussion about climate change. Instead of naming, blaming and shaming, he wants to add a positive focus. He says, our climate has always been dynamic. Cultures always adapt to these changes. Right now it seems that our climate is changing very rapidly, so extra fast response is required. The Sun Glacier project has put forward the essence that climate change means culture change. Well, that was powerful. I mean, that was like, I, I love seeing stuff like this because it really, I, I get excited about technology and people coming up with smart ideas. I mean, you get a bunch of smart people together and they come up with that. Solar powered water collection from the desert. And then again, yeah, then they, they build a greenhouse and we're growing food and vegetables. Like all of a sudden, boom. Think about, think about the Western United States that are in just a crushing drought right now. We've talked about that on this show. We've seen the, the fires right now in California are horrible. Every year this happens. Every September and October, we have awful fires and they're always worse than the year before. We have record drought. What if we did, what if we spent money like this instead of like more money for bombs and laser and giving money to neo-Nazi groups in Ukraine, a war we help start, like... Why, why can't we spend money on this? Oh, Russia's a big, crazy enemy. No, we pushed them into this. We pushed Russia into this. I don't like what Russia did. I don't like that they invaded, but we pushed them into this. NATO's been moving east since the 90s. And Putin's been like, I don't want this. I don't want this. I don't want this. So if we, if, if Russia tried to put a base uh, in Canada... Or China tried to put a base in Mexico, America would go nuts. So we can't be like shocked that Putin's acting this way, that we want to put NATO bases on his borders in Ukraine, and that there's neo Nazi groups, right? The Russians lost over 20 million people in World War II. The swastika is outlawed in Russia. The only place you can see it is in Soviet era artwork where there's like a Soviet soldier putting their boot on a swastika like we kicked the Nazis ass. That's the only place you can show it. You went out there and wave one, you'd get arrested. So rather than spend money on all these endless crazy wars, the $3.5 trillion we spent in Afghanistan to let the Taliban become the Taliban with more weapons, why don't we spend money on this and find solutions? I like this. I like the proactive approach of these doctors or these scientists to find solutions. That's what I want on this show. I've always tried to find solutions. Right? That's why you watch this show. Because are they going to show this on CNN or Fox? Maybe. But if they do, it'll be followed up by a Shell Oil ad or something crazy like that. Or some general going, oh, the China wants to invade. We need more bombs. No, we need more solutions to climate collapse. That's what we need. So thanks for watching the show. Support what we do, ladies and gentlemen. Go see us on the road. Go to GrahamElwood.com for tour dates. Sign up for the newsletter. And I've got a new channel, Graham Elwood Clips, which is just a lot of my stand-up clips. And I'm going to start making shorter clips because we've been demonetized, mainly because we talk about Epstein. <laughs> um, but... I'm putting shorter clips, a new channel, youtube.com slash Graham Elwood clips. Go subscribe to that. Once we build that up, maybe we can get that channel monetized uh, and then support our show on the scroll below. You see all the ways that you can support the show. Patreon, Venmo, Rockfin. Uh, there's a PO box. There's a lot of ways to support what we're doing. And I really appreciate it because you guys keep supporting us. This is why this is the people's channel. You're the best and smartest fans on the whole internet. You want the truth. Not indie left bicker fighting, whatever. You want the truth. You want solutions. That's what I want. That's why I started doing this show. Thanks for watching. Shave your knuckles for justice. Boom.